Well, for a moment, we're going to take you back to 1974. And that's when the Ronald McDonald House program began. And it was an initiative that was started by Philadelphia Eagle tied in Fred Hill. You see, Fred's three-year-old daughter, Kim, was diagnosed in 1974 with leukemia. And not wanting to leave Kim alone, Fred and his wife, Fran, slept on hospital chairs and ate food from vending machines. Now, during this time, the Hills also noticed other parents doing the same thing. And they also discovered that many of their parents had traveled great distances and could not afford the high cost of hotel rooms. So Fred rallied his teammates with the Philadelphia Eagles to raise funds to help support other families that were experiencing the same emotional and financial trauma that he and his wife were experiencing. Like we said, that was 1974. Moving forward to 2023, and over 380 Ronald McDonald House chapters later, we now have another initiative. And again, it involves football, and in this case, Big Ten football. The initiative is called Battle for the Houses, and it centers around the Michigan State-Michigan football game. The ringleader of this fundraiser is former Michigan State running back Todd Duckett. And Todd, thanks for joining us. And I think maybe the best way to get going with this conversation is to ask you how this whole thing began. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks for having me. Go Green. Um, It began... Um, kind of indirect. So back in 2011, um, when I when I really started to get involved with volunteering, giving, and serving, the Ronald McDonald House was in uh, Mid Michigan, and Lansing was one of the first places that we volunteered, and actually had a chance to learn what it means to be a volunteer and get involved. And we could see the families coming and going, but you know, we were just a bunch of us. We were just you know kids volunteering, didn't think much of it, just doing a good service. And then um, 10 years later, our youngest son was born with half a heart and um, had to end up having open heart surgery two days after he was born. And he ended up spending a lot, probably three, four extra weeks, five extra weeks at the uh, Mott uh, Hospital in Ann Arbor. And during that time, my wife, she stayed at the Ronald McDonald House in Ann Arbor during that time. So we went from volunteering to actually utilizing the house and seeing how much it meant. And then uh, this year we participated in um, Shamrock Shake. It was a fundraiser they had for Shamrock Shakes. And we were going to the hospital and giving Shamrock Shakes to the nurses. And we did that in East Lane or did that at, at Sparrow. And then we also did it at Mott. And out of that event, this why, how come these organizations haven't, had a, a fundraiser together and then we started thinking about the game and then we started thinking can we com- put the mid michigan house against the ann arbor house and this friend fun uh rivalry this uh competition and battle of the house battle for the houses was born in that moment and um reached once we, once both houses were on board reached out to mike martin um and told him what was going on and we've been friends for many many years anyway and it was just a perfect fit uh we all everybody jumped in and and since it's been an awesome awesome fundraiser for us and for the ronald mcdonald house charities before dalton jimson i do have to ask as you mentioned mike martin obviously had a great career at the university of michigan in football where did you guys meet we met. Uh, we had a mutual friend named Ryan Doyle, who um, does a lot of video work, Video Vision 360. So we met him, and or I met him. He was already friends with with Mike Martin, and started doing video work with him. He's recording all my videos, and then he just kind of saw our energy was the same energy, and obviously I've heard about him, so I knew who he was anyway, and we just started hanging out more and more, doing different projects. And I really got a chance to know him as a person, not just a, a guy on the other team from down the road. And had a lot of similar interests. interests. And um, you know, once we kind of put all our, our green and white and, and colors aside, we realized we had a lot of things in common, and we just became friends. Todd, I don't want to take this interview to a dark place, but in trying to read and get information, your youngest son, did he make it through those surgeries? 
Yes, yes. He he may he had one uh, two days after his surgery, or after his born. Then he ended up having another one about two or three months after that, and then uh, he scheduled for a third one in about two years or so, just depending on how things go between now and then. So yeah, right now he he's amazing. He's he's thriving. He's happy. He's just starting to walk. And if you didn't, if you didn't uh, see the scars on his chest or know the backstory, you would have no idea what he's been through so far. That is amazing, and thank God for it. Yeah. But Todd, you know, it, yeah. it's amazing too because you talk about years ago you used to just volunteer at this place, and it's a different kind of experience and perspective. But to undergo what you and your family did with this whole experience. How did that maybe change things for you, and and how did it maybe put into action where you said, you know what, I need to get involved and help out in some way? How did this inspire and transform you? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, it still does every single day, but there was a time when uh, during the ultrasound in the beginning before he was born, um, they asked us did we want to even continue with the with the with the pregnancy and um i mean it was a shock <clears throat> that's not what you expect when you go in and get your ultrasound you're expecting that he's this he's this big he's this size you know this is how many weeks he is and then have that question really through my wife and myself for a loop like what you, what and then you, you fast forward to him being born and and then the the being able to go to the house, Ronald McDonald House, and just escape for a minute, take a shower, just walk away, and 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 take some deep breaths, and then to go back and uh, you know jump back in the fire, wait to see what the doctors have to say, wait to see how he does coming out of surgery, and um, it, it 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 really took uh, volunteering and giving and serving for me to a different level. It's different when you do it out of uh, just just wanting to give back, out of fun, out of out of enjoying the, the 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 benefits of giving and serving. It's different when you do it then compared to when when it's actually your life and you're actually, in, I mean, giving and serving. I'm you're just trying to take care of your family. You're just trying to make sure everybody's good. And you know, you even got I have, I have uh, four other kids and. They're like, so where's X at? How come X isn't at home yet? And so they're asking questions. And it, it was just, it really was an amazing, um, humbling, um, I mean, it's just a wild experience. And like I said, uh, like right now, he's he's walking. So it's a, it's a blessing. Yep, it's a blessing. <clears throat> it still gets to me, you see. I mean, it's still... It's still tough, but uh, I mean, we're, we're truly blessed. There are some amazing families. <clears throat> there are some amazing families that utilize the house. There are some amazing people that that run the house, and I am thankful. Um, I'm just thankful that they're there. Yeah. Sorry about this. I'm kind of a little emotional still. It's only your son. <laughs> And your family. <laughs> but it's not just mine. I mean, this is everybody's. I mean, there's so many people who utilize this house. And there's so many people who, I mean, I've had four, I've had, I have five kids total. And the first four, there was, there was no issues. I mean, you, you go through the process, you, you go through the ultrasounds, you go to the hospital, the child's born, and you're home in a day or two. And then you just go through that. But there are families who, I mean, their child may not come home for a month, two months, or ever. And that's every single day. And you don't think about that. And you don't understand what what that does to families. And not just the parents, but the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the the kids. I mean, it's it's a huge it's a huge thing that really life is a miracle. But some people have their miracles show up in different ways. And ours, I mean, it wasn't expected, but I mean, here we are. And this, this, this young man has inspired battle for the houses. 
I mean, he's inspired opportunity for Michigan State football players to even come to the house and volunteer, to go to the hospital and volunteer. He's inspired this rivalry where, I mean, a lot of times they call this hate week where you're playing against a guy. But in this hate week, this young man has inspired love to happen between two schools, showing you that the game, it's bigger than the game. Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to play. One team's going to win. There's going to be bragging rights for 365 years or 65 days. But the things that happen off the field that this battle for the house, uh, house's charity has, has inspired, I mean, this goes way beyond the, the white lines. And, um, you know, it's very, very powerful for me. It's very impactful for me. And uh, it's, it's, like I say, your miracles and your blessings may not come the way you think they do. And it's been an awesome opportunity for us to grow closer as a family, for us to even go, go grow closer as either a Spartan family or a Wolverine family. It's a chance for us to really look at the opportunity, the privilege that we have, the stage that we have, and how can we give back to others in a, in a way that will continue to grow, will continue to help change lives. Well, I've often thought, Ty, that sometimes good things do happen to good people. And I think you and your family are an example of that. And on behalf of somebody who's watched you from afar do some of the magical things you do, thank you, because you've done a lot of good regardless of this situation. You've just been out there to help people for a long time. Yeah, and I mean, you know, that's that's how I got here. With the people that have helped me, and my family, Kalamazoo, Lansing, East Lansing, the Michigan State Spartan community. I mean, these are, we're, I was a kid, I was a kid back then. I mean, these are college kids on the football team. They're kids. So you got to have help from all different angles, not just catching the ball or making a tackle, but what does it mean to develop into a young man or a young woman? Like, what does that even look like? And I've had so much help and so much support to be able to achieve my dreams and my goals, it, it, I, it's, um, I have to. We have to give that back. We have to continue that cycle. We have to keep pouring back in the community what was poured into us. And it, it, it is, I mean, I, I feel like that is part of my, my, my mission, part of my, my purpose is to be able to do that and to see that a game like football can, can really bring so much joy and excitement and also sadness if your team loses, but it, a game of the football can actually impact a life and to see what a touchdown would do for, let's say, Spartan fans. Well, that's the same impact I want to have now that I can't score touchdowns. Let's see what volunteering can do. Let's see what service can do. And, and when you do it, you can have the same exact impact in a person's life. Todd, I thank you so much. I appreciate you guys for having me, man. This has been it's been a great, great uh, conversation. It's been a great experience. I want to thank all the Spartan Nation who has donated. We're we're right now we're over fifty five thousand dollars that have been donated. Um, just the, the the Michigan State football program. I want to thank them for being involved and allowing allowing the players to to see what it means to go to the house. I mean, the players that I was, that I was with when they were walking around Sparrow, I mean, some of them never seen a, a baby in the ICU, in the NICU. And, I mean, their hands were bigger than these little tiny babies. So when you actually put all that in perspective, yes, we want you to win the game. Yes, we want you to play hard. But there are real battles that are going on in this world that people are fighting every day that some of these young men and young women have no idea. And, and, and that being said, when they do get on the football fields, when they do get a chance to perform, they're not just playing for themselves. They're playing for the whole Spartan nation. They're playing for everyone who supports, who watches it. And on Saturday, people sometimes just need a little break and watching Michigan state play can be that break that people just need sometimes. Todd, if somebody wants to contribute either their time and or their cash or both, how do they go about doing that? They can go to battleforthehouses.com and that'll, it'll direct to there's, there's um, buttons you can push to donate. Uh, and then we'll be having a tailgate. Um, it's Ducker brothers, Tico and I, it's our 25th year of business. 
So we're having a 25-year anniversary tailgate along with Battle for the Houses. So um, if you want to go to battleforthehouses.com, there will be all the information for all those events up there. Well, last segment we heard from Todd Duggett, who got this Battle for the Houses going. Well, the other part of it is the University of Michigan part of it, and that's being headed up by former great Wolverine defensive lineman Mike Martin. And, Mike, thanks for joining us. And I, I guess maybe we should start off by talking about how you and Duck had got together. How did the connection happen? So, Todd, you know, I'm not going to not gonna, you know, show his age, but we're a couple, couple years older than each other. But we met after – college and after uh, both of our NFL careers and um, he's, he's always been in the community, you know, really doing a great job of engaging with youth and doing speaking engagements. And, um, you know, I'm really close with guys like Greg Jones and Jarrell Worthy and Javon Ringer being that uh, we played together in the NFL and naturally, you know, Todd and I became across each other and, we just uh, built, you know, built on friendship and known each other since basically 2015. And, um, you know, anything he needs, man, you know, he gave me a call about this battle for the houses. And I said, let's do it, man. Whatever, however I can help. Mike, were you surprised when he called? No, I wasn't surprised because, you know, he's, he's a guy that, you know, if I needed anything, he'd be right there for me as well. And that's the beautiful thing about football, man. And, you know, I get questions about, you know, how is it in the NFL, you know, when you you go and you're in the locker room and let's say, you know, you got a guy who played at Ohio State or Michigan State. And it's it's kind of ironic when you get to the NFL, you really become closer friends with those guys. And it's it's you against, you know, the SEC guys in the locker room. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's I'm really happy that he called me. I mean, we're almost. You know, I haven't checked, but I think we're almost close to $60,000 that we've raised for the Ronald McDonald Houses. Well, Mike, I do want to ask here, too, because you talk about uh, just the relationship you have, and no matter what it was Todd wanted to call about, you'd probably be there to help him. But besides that camaraderie, what have you learned or taken away from this experience of getting involved with the Ronald McDonald House, and what has that maybe been an inspiration for you? So, you know, really the inspiration, I've been involved in the community you know, ever since I've had a platform, it's been really important to me to give back and to pour back into the community that gave back to me. So I spent a lot of time at Children's Mott's Hospital in Ann Arbor, saw a lot of families and kids, you know, struggling. But when we, you know, put the, the effort in to spend some time with them and show up and talk with them, get to know them a bit, it just put a smile on their face and, you know, maybe alleviated some of the struggles that they were going through just for a few minutes. And, to me, that meant a lot. And, you know, Todd having a personal connection to the Ronald McDonald house with his family and his son, you know, it really touched me and it, you know, it, I could just see it in his eyes and hear it in his voice. So it, it was without apprehension, you know, me jumping on board and we've done so much in just a few months. I was talking with Todd, we were on Fox two local news here a couple of days ago. And I looked at him, I said, man, look how far we are. We've only, we've, you called me three months ago on this and we've got a website, we've got videos, we've got all these people engaging. So we're just really excited about where we are now and where we're going to be next year. Mike, I sure appreciate you being part of this. And uh, I just, it just, what you and Todd are doing is just fabulous. Yeah, I I appreciate it. And it's, it's really cool to me to see the community come together and understand that it's more important and bigger than football. You know, um, you know, we're going to have fun on Saturday and leading up, you know, to kick off and all of that. But we got to understand that, you know, this is about people. This is about community. And this is about bringing people together and, and helping folks. So, yeah. Well, after hearing what Mike Martin of the University of Michigan had to say, and of course, the real live story of Todd Duckett and his involvement, it's easy to see why there are some great things going on around this country and the battle for the houses is one of them.